In Creole Parametric, you can use a general mechanism connection in order to restrict additional degrees of freedom for the existing connections that you have. Let me show you how to do that. And I used to be on M1A1 Abrams tanks in the Army. I've always wanted to create a full up tank assembly with moving components. And I came across an assembly that actually had some tank tracks in them. But the problem is these are static components. So I want to create them so that the tracks actually move around in a loop. So let's create an assembly to do that. I'll go to file new. Let's change the type to assembly. I will call these my tracks. And then I will click the OK button. Let me choose my standard default template. So this kicks off my assembly model. I'm going to bring in an existing skeleton. I'll click on the assemble button and I'm going to change my filter down over here to parts and then the subtype to skeleton model. I have a skeleton model that basically has the curve that I want to use for a slot follower connection for those different tracks. All right, now that we have our skeleton model in here, let's assemble in our track segment. So I will click on the component. Let's readjust it over here. And let's see, for getting this to follow on this track over here, I'm going to use a slot follower connection. I'll choose slot over here. Let me turn off the display of the 3D dragger. And then I will select the path that I want it to follow. Let's select this point over here. That is good. Now I'm going to do a new set, a second set. And for this one, let's again select the same curve and then select a point over here. So there we have our tank tread segment that is on the curve. I will click the check mark. And so again, right now it doesn't slot follower connections. Uh, let me turn off my datum point display. Let's try moving this segment around the track. I will click on the drag button and then grab the component. And you'll notice that's twisting around over here. It's, it's flipping because those point follower, slot follower connections do nothing to prevent this from tipping around. So that's where you can use a general connection where you can end up adding in additional constraints. So let me select the track segment. I will edit definition. Let's take a look at the placement tab over here. So right now I've got my two different slot connections. Let's click on the new set button and I'll select the new connection over here, which is currently a slot connection. I'm going to use the drop down list here to change this to a general connection. And with a general connection, that allows you to add up to two additional assembly constraints. And so, for example, let me turn on my datum plane visibility and I'm going to select a datum plane. Let me actually before I do that, here we have our uh, general connection. I'm going to select the automatic constraint over here. You can see that we can choose between having a distance constraint, a parallel constraint, or a coincident constraint. So these are the additional kinds of constraints that you can add in. So it's like combining mechanism connections with standard constraints. I'm going to use a parallel constraint and I'll select this datum plane over here from the part and I have another there's a datum plane over here from the assembly skeleton that I want to use. And so now we've got a parallel connection inside of here. I will hit the check mark. Let me turn off the display of my datums. By the way, for some other work that I was doing, I moved my in graphics toolbar from the regular position down to the status bar. If you ever want to do that, you can go to file options and then window settings. This control allows you to specify where your in graphics toolbar is. The default setting is show on the top. And so that's why it you weren't seeing it up there in the top of the graphics area. So anyhow, I added my general connection to the two slot follower connections. Let's go to the drag icon and then click on this. And now you'll notice that it is following the path around over here, but it's not tipping over like it was before. And that's the idea behind the general connection. Again, you can add up to two additional assembly constraints 
using things like distance, parallel, or coincident in order to eliminate unwanted degrees of freedom. The reason that you can only do, add two additional constraints, usually three constraints are enough to eliminate all degrees of freedom of a component. If you want to eliminate all degrees of freedom of a component, you should not be using mechanism connections. All right, so let me show you some other additional stuff. Again, my whole goal is to make something that has the tank treads go all the way around on here. I am now going to add in another track segment just to show you how this would work. Let's click on the assemble button. I'll go to track segment and bring it on in here. Let me turn on my 3D dragger again just so I can roughly position this additional tank tread where I want it to be. Let's go to the placement tab. The first thing I'm going to add in here is a pin connection to connect these two different track segments. And so for the axis alignment, I'll click, I will pick that cylindrical surface and then this cylindrical surface. And to eliminate translation, I'll use datum planes. Let's select this datum plane from the one track segment and this datum plane over here. So there I have my pin connection to connect these two components together. Let me turn on my datum point display. I'm going to add in a second set over here. And this one, instead of being a pin connection, I'm going to change this to those slot follower connections. I'll pick the curve that I want it to follow and then this point over here. That's good. I will hit the check mark. Let's turn the display of the datums back off again and take a look at dragging this around inside of here. I'll go to the drag icon and then pick on here. And here you can see how the two track segments end up falling around. Oh, oops, accidentally flipped over there. Let me readjust that. Give a little space over here so you can see it big enough. There we go. And again, we can see here's my track segment going around the path over here and then up over here and then up over here. And so normally what I would do is keep on adding more until I have a full loop around here rather than bore you with that. I actually did that in a, another window. Here I have one where I have 12 of the segments together in here. And so, if I want to have this move around on the path, let's go to Applications and then Mechanism. And, oh, I already have a motor and an analysis in here. Let me delete those to show you how you would do that. I'm going to delete that analysis. Let's delete this motor. All right, so in order to have all this stuff move around on the track, I'm going to select the first slot follower connection, this one over here for the lead tank tread. And right from the mini toolbar, I can create a servo motor. And so here on the references tab, it's got the slot axis selected. Let's go to the profile tab. By default, it is showing that the driven quantity will be position. I actually want it to be velocity. And let's have it go one foot per second, 12 inches per second. That's good. I will hit the check mark. And so now we have a motor in here. Let's create an analysis. I will click on the new button. And here's the name that you can fill in. Normally I change this to kinematic. This time I'm going to use a position analysis. Uh, it's a slightly different algorithm. Let's see, let's increase the time that this is going to run. Let's use 200 seconds and the frame rate. Let's increase this so it's higher. We'll use a value of 25. And I'm going to use an, a snapshot so that I can always jump back to this position of the components. So there we have our analysis. I will click the OK button to define it. And then to run this, I can click on the analysis and hit the green flag. I could have run it from the dialog box itself, but I wanted to do it from the model tree. All right, I will hit the play button. Oops, going in the wrong direction. Let's hit the stop button. Let me then go back to the motors, edit definition, and here we have a flip button. I forgot to check the direction that the arrow was pointing on the motor. Let's hit the check mark. And now let's try running it again. Yes, let's overwrite the results. And there you can see how this is moving along 
the path that it's supposed to take. And so I just need to add in a whole bunch more of the tank tread so that I have a full tank track. All right, now it has finished running. Uh, maybe I should have chosen something less than 200 seconds. We have our playbacks over here. We can go to the playback, hit the play button. And here we have the animate dialog box. I can crank up the speed over here, hit the play button. And that's about how fa as fast as it's going to get based on the complexity of the model and the frame rate and the number of seconds that it is running for. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.